in the last class, we discussed about the effect of change of temperature. So, what is the effect of change of temperature? If you are converting solid to liquid, this process is known as fusion, and this back process is known as solidification. Is my voice clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Solid to gas is known as sublimation, and gas to solid is known as desublimation. Liquid to gas is known as vaporization and back from gas to liquid is known as condensation. So you have to remember this process. So this is the effect of change of temperature. And in the effect of change of temperature, latent heat is also there. Do you know what is latent heat? Any idea about latent heat? So like latent heat is like the amount of heat energy that is required to change one like latent heat of there are two kinds of latent heat mainly latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of fusion so like latent heat of fusion is when the amount of heat energy required to change the quantity of solid liquid state at the uh, atmospheric uh, pressures and uh, temperature Room temperature is just latent heat. This is like a kind of like when you heat up, heat something, the heat is at boiling point, the temperature remains constant. And so that is because of latent heat. Okay. So basically, latent heat is uh, when you are giving the heat to any of the substance, what will happen? The pressure will increase. Yes. So, and. And uh, in the latent heat, when you raise the temperature to change the physical state of the state, from like a solid to liquid or liquid to gas, there is no increase in temperature. That is latent heat. Latent heat means, in the simple words, there is no rise in temperature when the change the So, if you are converting from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, there is no rise in temperature. And how? And uh, there is a change in the state of the matter. So, okay. so, latent heat is that there is no rise in temperature when there is a change in the state of matter. So, it is what the, when a substance undergoes a change of any state, like if I am converting a solid to a liquid, so what has happened? When it is heated, the heat is absorbed by the particles of that substance. And that heat is known as latent heat. So, um, if latent heat is not there, so basically when we heat any substance, uh, if I'm converting from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, so there is a rise in temperature, right? But in the latent heat is what? There is no rise in temperature when we are changing a state of liquid to gas or any three of these states. Then how this process is happening? So, so like when a substance undergoes a change from any state to any other state, it is heated and the heat is absorbed by the particles of that. So here what is happening, the heat is getting absorbed by the particles of that substance and that heat is known as the latent. So if anyone will ask you what is latent, then you have to say that there is no rise in temperature when we change the state of it. Mark. So, for example, what is the example of a latent heat? Example means like when a pot of water is kept boiling. Okay, let's say if I'm keeping a pot of water to boil. So, what will happen? The temperature remains the 100 degrees Celsius until the last drop evaporates. So, if this is a beaker, if uh, in beaker there's a water and if I'm burning this beaker, so what is happening? The temperature of this beaker is 100 degrees Celsius and it will remain 100 degrees Celsius only until the last drop evaporates. So this is the example of the latent heat. Here you can see that, that this temperature do not increases to 200 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Celsius. It remains 100 degrees Celsius only, right? No, no. no. So it remains 100 degrees Celsius only. There is no rise in the temperature. So this type of heat is known as the latent heat when the heat is absorbed by the particles of a substance without increasing the rise in temperature. That is known as the latent. Any doubt in the latent? Okay. So you can see this is the diagram. This is the sensible heat. This is the latent heat. What is sensible heat? 
that if I am uh, heating this beaker, let's say this beaker is at 60 degree Fahrenheit and after heating this increases to 212 degree Fahrenheit. And if I take the same case of the latent heat, what will happen? This is your latent heat. So this is the, uh, this. Uh, I'm boiling this water and now this water converts into a water vapor or it evaporates. So here the temperature and this side the temperature is constant. So this is the phenomena of the latent heat that it, uh, you know, it can easily change the state of matter without increasing the temperature. Okay. Now, in the latent heat, you have two types. First, latent heat of fusion. Second, latent heat of vaporization. What is fusion? Fusion means when solid changes into a liquid, that is known as fusion. And vaporization means when liquid changes into a gas, that's vaporization. So what is a latent heat of fusion? Latent heat of fusion is the quantity of heat which is required to convert a unit mass of a substance from solid to liquid without change in temperature. So here what is happening? Your physical state of matter is converting from solid state to a liquid state without increasing the temperature, without change in the temperature. That is known as the latent heat of fusion. And what is latent heat of vaporization? Same, the quantity of the heat which is required to change, to convert the unit mass from liquid to gas without change in temperature. That is known as the latent heat of vaporization. And how this process is working? Uh, here, what is happening? Uh, uh, when it is heated, when I'm heating any uh, like solid, if I'm heating, then what is happening? The heat is getting absorbed by the particles. Let's say this is the ice and ice is converting into a water. So what is happening? The particles of ice absorb the heat. Heat is absorbed by the particles of the substance. And that heat is known as the latent heat, which helps this solid to convert into a liquid or convert from solid to a liquid without changing a temperature so that is the latent heat understood okay so fusion you got it what is fusion solid to liquid and vaporization is liquid to a gas fusion means uh, the heat which is required to convert into a unit mass from solid to liquid without change in temperature same for here from liquid to gas without okay okay so next we will learn what is effect of change of pressure we completed effect of change of temperature. If you have any doubt, then you can switch on your mic and ask me. Okay? Uh, from that itself, yeah. Uh, so effect of change of temperature we already discussed. Now it's time to now it's time for an effect of change of temp pressure. But before this effect of change of pressure, I want to teach you evaporation because this is very interesting topic evaporation so can you tell me what is the difference between evaporation and boiling because both in both the cases your liquid is converting to a gas so why we are uh, like studying both different topics evaporation and boiling because here gas is only converting to a liquid now so can you tell me why there is a different topic of evaporation and boiling uh, switch it on and then Yes, so in evaporation also the liquid converts into the gaseous state. But what is the difference is that the conversion of the liquid state into its gaseous state at any temperature below the boiling point is known as evaporation. Also, evaporation is a surface phenomenon that the molecules only at the surface of the liquid will get converted. Okay, but... Uh, what is the example of evaporation? Example? Yes, ma'am. So evaporation is when you leave a dish of water outside in the sun for a while. You'll notice after some time that the water level has reduced because of evaporation. While when you take a pot of water and you boil it, that is known as boiling because at the boiling point, all the water will convert to the vapors. Uh -huh. So in boiling point, what is happening? It's a natural process or uh, we have to supply heat? Boiling. From... boiling is when we supply the external heat where ah. evaporation it just absorbs heat from the surrounding yeah, very good so now you can switch it out <laughs> so evaporation is what the conversion of the liquid to gas at any temperature and what is boiling point 
the phenomena of the phenomena of a conversion of a liquid to a gas at a boiling point and what is the major difference between a evaporation and boiling point evaporation is a natural phenomena and in boiling point what we have to do uh, uh, when burner is put to give it you know? so if let's say this is a beaker and i have to uh, supply a heat to this beaker so what i have to do i have to apply some heat Uh, heat to this beaker, a burner I'll apply, or okay. Um, so uh, when burner is put to give a heat, so that is known as the boiling point. But in evaporation, it's a surface phenomenon, and uh, your boiling point is a bulk phenomenon. So what is the bulk phenomenon? Bulk phenomenon, which involves the total molecules, including the interior molecule, molecular molecules, along with the surface molecules. Here, uh, here, what is involving? It is involving the total molecules which is present inside this beaker, and this evaporation is a surface phenomenon. Okay, and this is a gradual process, and this is an energetic process. Why this is an energetic process? This is an energetic process because here we have to supply a heat. Then only it will. Uh, then only the liquid will convert into a gas. So it's an energetic process. We have to apply some energy. We have to apply some Heat, so it's energetic process, and this is a gradual process because it's happening automatically. Now, what is the example of evaporation? Uh, let's say the perfume bottle. So, uh, this is a perfume bottle. How to make a perfume bottle? <laughs> like this. Let's say this is a perfume bottle. So, if I'm keeping a perfume bottle without its cap, so what will happen? You will see the perfume decreases, and the perfume level decreases. So, why perfume level is decreasing? Because Your perfume is evaporating. That's why the perfume level decreases. So this is a surface phenomenon. We we can't call that this is a boiling, uh, um, boiling like boiling. This is a evaporation. Why? Because this is happening naturally. We are not supplying any heat to a perfume bottle. Huh? No. This is happening naturally. And what uh, what can be more example? Let's say the um. If I'm putting a water on the floor, let's say this is a floor, and I'm putting some water on the floor. So what will happen? Um, after some time, you will see the water evaporates, है ना? After two to three minutes or five to ten minutes, you will see the water evaporates. So this is a natural phenomenon. Here I'm not applying some burner in the down to the floor. कि अच्छा it will heat like a boiling point. No. I'm not applying anything. It's a natural process which is happening. So this is known as evaporation. And now you understand evaporation and boiling point. In boiling point, we have to supply some heat or energy. So that's an energetic process, and here gradual process. Now evaporation. What will happen? It causes cooling. Evaporation causes cooling. Uh, why evaporation causes cooling? Because let's say <clears throat> in body we have sweat, and all human beings sweat. So the sweat. Gets vaporized from the skin into the atmosphere. How? By absorbing the heat from the body. So, if sweat will absorb the heat from the body and it gets evaporated. So, after that, what will happen? We like our body starts feeling cool. So, evaporation leads to cooling. Okay. So, you have also observed that when we sweat. Now afterwards, we feel some kind of a cooling kind of effect in our body, right? So why there is a cooling effect in our body? Because the sweat gets vaporized from the skin into the atmosphere. Means the sweat gets evaporated. How? By absorbing the heat from the body. Hmm. And this evaporation leads to cooling in our next. Now, why this happens in? A water bottle. One second. Hmm. So why why does the water come out of the cold water bottle? You have also seen now that sometimes if we are putting a cold water bottle, so we have seen some of the droplets in the surface of the cold water bottle. So why it is happening? It is happening because of the um, when warm air which is present in our surroundings. When warm air hits the cold surface, so this is what this is the cold surface of the water bottle. So around this, there is a warm air. So when a warm air hits the cold surface, what will happen? It reaches its dew point and condensation. So what is condensation? Condensation means process where water vapor becomes 
liquid. So here, what is happening? The water vapor, which is present in the environment, it is converting into a liquid. That's why we used to see the water droplets in the surface of a cold water bottle. Hmm. Or you can also say the warm air, which is present near the bottle, cools. And some of the water vapor condenses into liquid water, which is then deposited in the outside of the bottle. Okay. So that's why we used to see the water droplets outside of the um, cold uh, water bottle. Now next, clothes, uh, cotton clothes. So why do we wear cotton clothes in summer? So because cotton easily absorbs sweats from the body. That's why we used to wear the cotton clothes in the summer. And one more um, like uh, theory can be behind this is like the cotton clothes have fine, fine threads, have a fine threads which can easily allow air to pass through as compared to your woolen clothes. So if more air flowing will be there, then evaporation process will become easier. Hmm. That's why we used to wear a cotton clothes in some. Got it? Why cotton clothes we are wearing? Because cotton, uh, cotton clothes is having it fine fine threads which is allowing the air to pass uh, uh, as compared to your woolen clothes and uh, if air is passing then what will happen it easily get evaporates fastly that's why we are using a cotton clothes huh. what is like in the sanitizer why uh, huh. sanitizer is what if you are applying a sanitizer in our hand it it, it evaporates fast. Huh? So why? Because the sanitizer is very volatile. What is volatile? Volatile means it will evaporate fast. So if evaporation will become faster, then what will happen? Then we won't be able to see any of the droplets of the sanitizer in our hand. Hmm. Factors affecting the rate of evaporation. So you tell me if temperature will be, just tell me yes or no, okay? uh, don't get a bang. Uh, if temperature will increase, then rate of evaporation will increase or decrease? This yes or no? No, no don't get up. <laughs> okay, yeah, it will increase. What about the wind speed? If wind speed is increasing, evaporation will? Okay. Surface area? Humidity? Uh, why humidity? Uh, the rate of evaporation will decrease? Okay. Because if in air there is already a water, then what will happen? The rate of evaporation will be less. You know? That's why in the humidity, your rate of evaporation will decrease. So any doubt in the evaporation process? Okay. Once, um, what? Let us go through this note. One minute. Just so what is evaporation? The process of conversion of a liquid into a vapor state at any temperature below its boiling point is known as evaporation. The particles of a liquid have different amounts of kinetic energies and the particles which is present at the surface possesses higher kinetic energy as compared to those which are present in a bulk. That's why evaporation is a, a surface phenomenon and boiling point is a bulk. Hmm. And factors affecting we discussed surface area. If surface area will increase, then rate of evaporation will increase. So evaporation and surface phenomenon, if the surface area is increased, rate of evaporation increases. Example, while putting the clothes for drying up or we spread them. Huh? If you are putting our clothes in, uh, for drying up, so what will happen if the surface area increases, then evaporation will become fast. Temperature, the rate of evaporation of temperature increases while air rise in temperature. So when the when there is an increase of temperature, there will be increase in the rate of evaporation. For example, um, evaporation is faster in a hot summer day than in a winter. Uh, just like the same example we took, if we are, if I'm putting a water in the floor, uh, what will happen in the summer? It will get evaporated fastly as compared to in the winter season. Hmm. Third, humidity. Humidity, what will happen? The rate of evaporation decrease. Wind speed, if wind speed will be faster, then what will happen? Evaporation will also become faster. Okay. Now, this is very important. This one. Effect of change of pressure. This topic is very important. So what is the effect of change of pressure? So this is the compressibility process. It means in the solid state, we have already discussed the, in solid state, there's a very strong force of attraction. Particles are not able to move. Particles can only vibrate in their fixed position. So what will happen if we will further compress the solid state? There is no scope. They won't change their shape. 
uh, they will break but they won't change their shape right if you further compress a solid for example the mic which is kept here to you if you will put a temperature uh, like pressure so what will happen the may mic will you know there there won't be any uh, change of your uh, um, you can say shape or what will happen to a gaseous state in the gaseous state let's say this is a in gaseous state your particles are very far from each other so what will happen if it will apply some pressure to it there is a scope that particles can come nearer to each other and and there and there can be a strong force of attraction in the gas ha na so if we are studying a effect of change of pressure so with the help of a gaseous state this is the very best case to study the effect of change of pressure because in this if you are applying pressure there is no scope but here if because here there is already a strong of force of attraction the particles are already in their fixed position they can't move also but in the gaseous state the particles are very far away from each other so if you will apply some pressure to it there can be a scope that particles can come nearer to each other and there can be a strong force of attraction in the gaseous okay now the very uh, good example here uh, related to this topic is a lpg cylinder so here how gas is lpg full form is liquefied now l is liquefied liquefied means liquid so here how gas is converted into a liquid because lpg is cylinder and in cylinder there is a gas but l is l stands for a liquefied so how gas converts into a liquid so how so if we will exert a pressure to a gas so what will happen gas particles come near you know they will be like in the so there will be a strong force of attraction if they will come here if they exert a pressure simultaneously what we have to do we have to if you are increasing the pressure of a gas simultaneously we have to decrease the temperature of a gas hmm what we have to do we have to decrease the temperature of a gas so if we are decreasing the temperature of a gas what will happen the the kinetic energy of a gas particle will decrease it. Hmm? the kinetic energy of a gas particle will decrease it. and when the kinetic energy of gas particle will decrease the particle's motion will slow down and when the particle's motion will slow down there will be strong force of attraction and if there is a strong force of attraction in the gaseous state then there may be case that it will convert its state right i know so now if i am if i am exerting a pressure like further if i am exerting a more pressure simultaneously i have to decrease the temperature also then what will happen here your gas converts into liquid mm. and if i am exerting more pressure and decreasing the temperature now what will happen the liquid will converts into a solid okay liquid will convert into a solid for example if we take a carbon dioxide gas co2 gas if we will exert a more pressure in the co2 gas simultaneously we have to increase the temperature also so this will convert into a liquefied carbon dioxide and further it will convert into a solid carbon dioxide and further it will convert into a dry ice so this is your dry ice you know in movies they used to you know so this is a dry ice so dry ice is what dry ice is a wet ice uh, it you can also call this fog you know this is also can be called as a fog and here dry ice is how we can achieve up to this dry ice after solid carbon dioxide we have to decrease the pressure and if we will decrease the pressure then the solid carbon dioxide will convert into a dry ice which is a fog now there is a certain temperature above which the gas cannot be converted into a liquid state if we are increasing the pressure simultaneously we have to decrease the temperature but there is a certain temperature there is a you know limit of the temperature above which your gas cannot be converted into a liquid state and so this temperature is known as the critical temperature and uh, uh, and the pressure is known as the critical pressure okay 
for example for the carbon dioxide your critical temperature is 31 degree to 15 degree celsius and the critical pressure of your carbon dioxide is 73 to 9 atmosphere so if you will write this in your exam now so there will be good impression hmm. so this is a critical temperature and this is a critical pressure so what we learned in this effect of change of pressure that if we are applying a pressure and the solid state there is no scope that it will uh, convert into something because there is already a strong force of attraction so with the help of a gaseous state if i'm applying uh, a you know pressure in the gaseous state so it may happen he, your uh, particles will become nearer to each other and there will be a strong force of attraction. So you can take example of the LPG cylinder, how here the gas is converts into a liquid by exerting a pressure to it. If you are exerting a pressure, what will happen? The gas particles become nearer and there will be a strong force of attraction. And by exerting a pressure simultaneously, you have to decrease the temperature. If you are decreasing the temperature, what is happening? The kinetic energy also decreases of the gas. And if the kinetic energy decreases, the particles motion slow down and there will be a strong force of attraction between the gaseous particles. And if I'm further applying pressure to it and, de and decreasing the temperature, the gas here, the gas already converts into a liquid and further your gas will convert into a solid for example carbon dioxide if i am uh, exerting a pressure first the gas will convert into liquid and then the gas will convert into a solid carbon dioxide and now if we will decrease the pressure it will convert into a dry ice which is a fog you can say or a wet ice so there is a certain limit to a certain temperature above which your gas cannot be converted into a liquid or a solid state and that temperature is known as the critical temperature and the pressure is known as the critical pressure and for the carbon dioxide critical temperature is 31 to 15 degree and carbon pressure i mean critical pressure is 73 to 9 at understood what is effect of change of pressure any doubt sure oh next next is plasma so what is plasma do you know what is plasma okay so plasma is the fourth state of matter first is solid second is liquid third is gaseous and the fourth is plasma okay why this is green yeah green. so fourth state of matter is plasma so what is happening in plasma Let's say this is a beaker and in this beaker, I put some ice into it. So what will happen if I give heat to this ice? Your ice will convert into heat and your ice will melt. Wo melt ho and after that, what will happen? After melting, it will convert into a water. Hmm. If I'm giving a further heat. So after that, if I'll give a more heat to a water, what will happen? The gas will convert into a particles and there will be a particles of atoms which will contain electrons, protons, and neutrons. So in your beaker, there will be a particles of an atom. So atoms, which is positively charged, which is known as the ions. So the atoms, ions, and electrons all are present inside the beaker, which is known as the ionized gas. And ionized gas is known as the plasma. Okay? So what is happening in the plasma? Again, if I am heating the ice it is converting into water and if i'm giving more heat then what will happen the the water will convert into a gas particles and the gas particles in the form of the atoms which contain electrons protons and neutrons so atoms which is the positively charged known as the ions so in inside the beaker there's atoms electrons ions everything is there so that so these are known as the ionized gas which is present inside the beaker and ionized gas is known as the plasma and uh, sun is what sun is a star so matter is always in a plasma state and 99.9 percent .9 of the universe is made up of the plasma okay 99.9 percent .9 of the universe is made up of the plasma so quickly we will revise uh, oh uh what is uh 
how will you get from solid to liquid is it solidification or fusion ha huh, now you can say because yes. all the topics are covered ha huh. so from solid to liquid it's a from process solid to liquid it is process of fusion and from back to solid to like from liquid to a solid liquid to solid is uh, freezing or solidification yeah from a liquid to a gas liquid to gas state is vaporization or boiling ha huh. and back from back gas from gas liquid is condensation yeah. but and one more no um solid to gas and gas solid solid to gas is sublimation when gas to solid is deposition or desublimation yes very good and uh, this you learn no? the the formula how to convert huh? yes ma'am next next course later please so Can you tell me what is latent heat? Latent heat is the uh, heat when, like, when we heat a substance at a particular mm-hmm. temperature, which is the um, the at a particular temperature, the temperature doesn't change anymore. The temperature remains constant. That latent heat, or the heat energy stored in the molecules at that particular point, is known as the latent heat. Ah, uh, and only there will be a change of state of matter, no? Yes. Uh, and there won't be any change in the temperature. What is latent heat of fusion? The latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy that is required to change the unit mass of the mm-hmm. solid into a liquid at its melting point at, at the atmospheric pressure. Normal is known as the latent heat of fusion. The process is same for the liquid to a gas. Yes, ma'am. And uh, what was the next one? Huh? Effect. But question called evaporation. Evaporation difference, evaporation and boiling point. Major difference is this one that we have to supply heat to a boiling point, right? Yes, ma'am. This is the part. Bulk phenomena, energetic process because we are, we are applying some energy or heat to it. Why uh, it causes cooling in this process? Because like the sweat, it absorbs the heat energy from our body and then it evaporates thereby producing a cooling effect yeah. and what about this this is due to the process of condensation there is water vapor present in the air so when it comes in contact with the cold surface the water vapor condenses to form the water droplets on the surface and why we cotton clothes from the cotton clothes are like a good absorber of the sweat so it absorbs a lot of sweat and exposes it to the air and so all the sweat evaporate causing a cooling effect thus the right. cotton has also pores which uh, expose yeah. the Uh, in cold press, right? Yes. And what about sanitizer? Sanitizer is a very volatile substance. Means that it evaporates very quickly. So when it comes in contact with the hand, it immediately evaporates, taking the heat from our palms, thereby producing cooling effect. And uh, uh, in the temperature, if temperature increases, rate of evaporation increases. When increases, surface increases, humidity decreases. Yes. What is plasma? Plasma is the uh, gas in its ionized state, and uh, uh, it's a fourth state of matter, isn't huh? it? And yeah. what is the process of matter? Like how we can achieve plasma? And like when Light you ice, ice okay. it converts into water, and when you heat water further, it converts into gas. And when you he- keep heating the gas, the gas consists of the atoms, which consist of the electrons, neutrons, and protons, and they this consists of the I- ions. Hence, it is known as the ionized state, which is plasma. Ionized gas, and this is known as the plasma. Next, uh, this was there. Right? Yes. Every sort of change of pressure. Explain with us. And can you repeat the question? Uh, can you explain the process? Yes, ma'am. So basically, this can be best explained with the gaseous state. So the gaseous states have a weak force of attraction. and they have a lot mm-hmm. of intermolecular spaces between them so when you compress which is a, a gaseous state which is basically applying the pressure the gas molecules come closer to each other forming the liquid state and when you further apply pressure on the liquid state it converts into the solid state okay and 
you can take an example of a carbon dioxide and thing yes ma'am so like basically when you have the carbon dioxide gas when we apply the pressure to it it becomes liquefied carbon dioxide now when you apply further pressure it changes into a solid carbon dioxide which is also known as the dry ice okay very good one minute yes ah uh, you have completed a1 of this right yes ma'am a1 is done only one is done now so can i ask you a question from this moment okay so why particles gas vibrate in solid um no like not in Yes. And the question is why the solid the molly the particles in solid vibrate. Huh. Yes, ma'am. Because the solid particles have very less intermolecular space and they have a strong force of attraction, so the particles cannot move about their own space. Hence, they have very limited kinetic energy. Hence, they are only able to vibrate in their fixed position. Okay. Um. Convert the temperature of seventy degrees Celsius to ten degrees. Yes. Seventy degrees Celsius to ten degrees. But should I use seven two seventy three point one six or only two seventy three? Um. If you have phone, then you can use two seventy three point one six to calculate okay. like the temperature. Okay. Or you can also use. It. So. But it's better to use two seventy three point. Yes, ma'am. So you add seventy plus two seventy three point one six, which is three forty three forty three point one six Kelvin. What? It is three. It is three forty three point one six Kelvin. Next question is higher the melting point of the substance dash if you have to fill will be the force of attraction between its particles means if higher There's a melting point of any substance. The force of attraction between the particles will be like lesser or greater. It will be less lesser. Yeah, it will be less. Next is particles from the bulk of the liquid hold energy to change into which state? To gas state. To which state? To the bulk of the liquid absorbs heat energy. To change into the gaseous state. Oh, very good. So, in the school, the chapter is going on, and we are done with this chapter. We have just started the next chapter. Like our, our teacher told us a little bit about solution. The next one is matter around the sphere. Okay, this one solution. So, do you want me to start? Yeah, atoms and molecules, or the, is matter around the sphere? And we can start the next one. They're doing in school is matter around the sphere. Okay, but any doubt in this chapter? Matter in our surrounding? No, ma'am. Tomorrow you will have assignment, and after that, on uh, means in the next week you will have to test. Yes, and and then we'll start with the which one? Ha, huh. is matter around the sphere. So yes. here we discuss solid state, liquid state, gaseous state, you know? Yes. And what else we discuss? We discuss changes of state of matter, the graph, and the fusion and everything. What is con? Oh, sorry, goodness. What is sublimation? Sublimation. Yes, ma'am. So when we were asking, what is sublimation? Sublimation. Yes, ma'am. So it's like. the part the particles like camphor and all if you leave it out in the open for a while the solid it changes directly into the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state so this process is known as the sublimation when liquid directly changes into a gaseous state when solid no when solid directly converts into a gas state without Involving it. So this we discussed. We discussed now the numerical scales of melting temperature. You already know this how to do. Next, what we discussed: latent heat, latent heat of fusion, vaporization without the change in temperature, effect of change of pressure. Ah, uh, the very best example is LPG cylinder. Here we have to compress it, convert liquid, and then convert to a solid. And then by uh, you know by decreasing the pressure, what we have to do? We have to convert it into a dry ice. Next, we discussed about the evaporation. Evaporation is a surface phenomenon. This is a bulk, energetic, gradual process. Here we discuss some of the examples. And the fact is affecting the rate of evaporation. And the next and the last topic 
we discussed is what is plasma, right? Yes, ma'am. So, in any topics, no, ma'am. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay then. So then. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. And yeah, uh, one uh, solids are rigid or yes, ma'am. Solids are rigid. And what is rigidity? Rigidity is basically how the solids they are packed very tightly together. They have their own shape. Ah, tendency to maintain it, right? Yes. Okay then. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Yes.